Hello there, welcome to Life Lived Out of Order. Now, today I'm talking about the breakdown of human communication, society, and how evolution is involved. We are told in very layman's terms that evolution is based off of survival of the fittest. This is misleading as it leaves out the other half of how evolution occurs. And I do not mean the gradual change from one creature to another, which I do not believe in, but that's not what this is about but rather gradual modifications within a species or subgroup of that species. The real summarizing phrase should be, more, should be words more to the effect of evolution occurs by way of the gene, genes and social structures with the greatest opportunity to pass along. We are extremely social creatures, so social skills are a part of our evolution. Now, for genes... Everyone is born with minor mutations. Some good, some bad, some don't matter. But we all have them. Now, for the Inuits, the Eskimos, they have evolved to be able to live in colder temperatures. But in the beginning, they were just really cold all the time. Eventually, someone was born with a mutation that kept them warmer naturally. This mutation was not intentional, just random, as all the other mutations. But this mutation happened to be beneficial to this people in this location. This mutation would have been bad for people in Florida, but it could have happened. It's mutations. It ha is how it works. This person had the physical advantage of being able to hunt longer and work longer, <clears throat> making him more preferred as a mate because he was a better provider. <clears throat> now the social structure kicks in. Superior DNA does not guarantee that genes will pass along or that they will be passed along a lot. Meaning, doesn't guarantee that he's going to have multiple kids. In any social organization, team players are required. It doesn't matter how superior the DNA is. If they do not benefit the group, they would eventually be removed from the group. Removed from the group. Is this, is this rule set in stone? No. It's kind of the general flow of society. We're social creatures. Everything is teamwork. People with bad social skills are generally ostracized. doesn't matter what else they have to offer. Now, how does this apply today? Communication is actually about 7% verbal and about 93% nonverbal. But when we go to school, we are only formally taught verbal skills. We have to fend for ourselves to learn the nonverbal skills. If a child is not on the same level as everyone else, then most likely the child will not catch up, especially since teachers have no idea how to deal with this issue, and many times they'll just make it worse. Because formally, we're all taught verbal skills. We're not taught nonverbal skills, and most people don't really have a grasp on it. Ever wonder where the feeling of creepy actually comes from? It's, it is the nonverbal linguistic part of your brain sending a signal, signal to the conscious part of your brain saying, does not compute. That is very lame as terms, but it is accurate. So basically, if you're in a situation and your nonverbal brain is trying to interpret what's going on, if it can't interpret what's going on, then it just sends out this, this loud ping saying, does not compute, something's wrong. But see, and that's the kind of the feeling of creepy. You feel this is creepy, but I, I don't understand what's going on. Why, where this feeling's come from, coming from? And it's especially if it's a uh, conversation problem. You're like, I understand intellectually what this person is saying, but for some reason I feel creeped out. That's because you're focusing on that seven percent verbal. You know what they are actually. You know what the verbal is. All right, but what's not adding up is the nonverbal behind it. You're like, I, I can't figure this out. It's not adding up. And because we have no formal, actual formal training there, we don't know how to identify it or get around it. So this is important because these days, this part of the brain is not developing in the ways that it has developed for thousands of years. Today, people are growing up watching TV and they're watching cartoons, animations, that can never produce these fa facial expressions and body language that we communicate with. So we don't feed that part of the brain. So we're either not getting that information or we're training it incorrectly because 
cartoons don't have a lot of facial expressions, and that's probably why a lot of anime have they they have larger eyes. They're trying to give you those emotions, but still, this is all animation. This is not reality. We're not getting the real skills that we real interpretations that our mind needs to needs to pull apart. So even worse, we communicate so much via texting and messaging apps that we can't even hear voice and its inflections because inflections are a part of that nonverbal, despite the fact it's a slightly verbal still. All of this starves the nonverbal linguistic part of the brain. And these people get older and try to attend social events and they experience more and more anxiety because the brain is seeing all of these faces and it's not able to interpret what's going on. I mean, you have a general idea of whether people are happy or sad, but there's actually so much more going on, but you've never learned how to interpret it. It's, you know, it's like uh, you're in a foreign country and you don't speak the verbal language. It's a bit lost on you. So, and then what happens when you start seeing all these faces and you're like, I, I don't understand what's going on. You're just getting this loud, massive signal uh, of does not compute and then you're sitting there thinking I, I should know something but I don't but I know nothing and you don't understand why this is you know something is really messed up in there and you're getting that anxiety because you cannot you're not interpreting the verbal the nonverbal communication it gets worse because as these people attempt to engage socially they are using the best of their skills and with the best of intentions, but they are, e uh, they are easily rejected in many social interactions. Their skills are adolescent and the people they are talking to can't interpret what you're doing because your body language is not producing readable signals. And they are getting creeped out because their nonverbal brain cannot interpret what you are doing. All right, so let me recap and reiterate there because this is a bit of a complicated concept. People, people are losing the ability to transmit and interpret nonverbal signals. The feeling of anxiety and creepy are mostly produced when the nonverbal mind can't make heads or tails of a situation. When we study a tree, all observers are able to observe the same thing. As humans, when we observe ourselves, we are the only observers of ourselves and our own experience. And every experience is completely unique. All of our mental models of how we understand the world around, around us is completely internal, and other people cannot easily study these models, vice how we can all study the same tree. This leads to much more confusion, being that we can't compare experiences scientifically and significantly and these failed social interactions with no closure as to how they failed lead us to greater societal degradations so basically in these situations um, when we get rejected socially we don't get closure because they don't exactly understand why they're rejecting us because they're getting that feeling of creepy of does not compute literally I don't understand so you can't get closure there. They don't exactly understand themselves what's wrong. You you both just know something's wrong, but neither one of you can identify what that is. So, remember my words about evolution at the beginning of this video? Social creatures cannot survive without a social structure that binds them together with some group mission of survival. Superior social skills are a part of evolution. So has technology stunted our evolution? Have we started moving backwards? Will this degradation destroy us? Or is technology modifying our social evolution to where our evolution now depends on technology? Exciting times. But one of the aspects of this is, you know, I've noticed how males Males mostly are delving into these video game worlds. And it's so much easier in the video game worlds because you're following a script. You don't have to worry about being rejected. And if something bad happens, you just replay it. 
This is not healthy. It was fun in the 80s when Atari and Nintendo came out, but it wasn't terribly involved. But now... Now the it, it's getting so involved. These RPGs... Um, you can get you can get emotionally involved in these games and at the end of the game when you beat the game at the end of it and I'm gonna give you a hint here at the end of the game you don't get laid that's what I used to tell guys in the barracks you know get them out of the barracks you know you're in a beautiful part of the country you know sunny sunny Southern California or Okinawa Japan like go enjoy the area stop wasting your life in these video games you literally get nothing out of it now we have these massive multiplayer games with um, uh, people connecting all over the place, which I guess is slightly better, but it's still a fake reality. And the things you say in the game, you're not going to say to normal, regular people. Um, you're using a... I can't even get into that one too deep. Your communication skills there, you're not learning the verbal, non-verbal skills, it's all verbal. And it's like a bad verbal. Not bad words, but just bad ways of communicating with people so as I just asked is technology modifying our social evolution to where our evolution now depends on technology my answer is I don't know what it all means but be prepared for anything and try to maintain the ancient retirement structure of having a strong marriage and producing capable children because as society degrades you don't know what's going to happen and you just need to be prepared so have a good day